Greetings and welcome to the podcast for Mom's Strange Magic. I'm your host and primary storyteller, Kim Upton. Join me as I discuss topics on just about any subject you can imagine while also telling you stories about my wild, wonderful, and weird life. Welcome to Mom Strange Magic, the podcast. The title of this week's podcast or of this episode is When the Going Gets Weird, the Weird Turn Pro. Um, actually, it'll be probably shorter than that when it's uploaded, but basically is when it's weird, go pro. I have had a break from a lot of things over the last month and I have taken that opportunity to listen to all of my podcasts and to relive all of the feelings I had when I was making those podcasts and to say, you know, make notes that said, you said uh 14 times in that podcast or you really just kind of went into Kimbo Ramble Town there and looked at it with a healthy critical eye not a oh my gosh this is the worst I can't believe I did that people are not gonna like me whatever um when in fact my podcast numbers keep going up people keep listening they keep downloading it it's really kind of boggling my mind the places where it's hosted send me little messages that say congratulations your podcast hit 100 listens or your podcast hit 200 listens and to me that is amazing that was never my goal the reason to start the podcast if you've listened to past episodes was to get myself into this rhythm into this ritual and to move past some of the insecurities that I had kind of gathered in the past 10 years of dealing with a whole lot of hot mess things that I just didn't need to talk about in the podcast and some of you know about some of you know part of it like you know there are a whole there's a whole whirlwind of things kind of just smattered in this 10-year cycle of learning and growing and coming into where I want to be as a person and my last podcast uh there was a little bit the vestiges of that was still kind of there i was feeling a little rocky like why would i want to do this what is the what is my end goal what is my hope because what you see a lot of online are everyone's doing something to move potential customers or clients to an end goal to sign up for a membership box or to sign up for a monthly subscription or to do something that funnels you into money for them and I think that that is great it's tried and true if you've had any marketing classes or taken any business classes I mean that really is what you're doing you're you're creating kind of this tributary that flows into a little bit of um, kind of like a, a stream and then the stream goes to the river and the river goes to the ocean and that is the goal of business it doesn't matter if you're online or not that is the goal of business and i really kind of chafe at that because i mean it's it works i mean it, it does work i've used it before and i understand that process and in college that's we learned that i mean that's like the first thing in your marketing classes is that you know you pivot the synergy to flow the workspace into 
the demographics that you want. But after doing that for, I and I, I'm the person that I'm going to try something. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to try it a different way. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to keep going until I get to the end. And the result is this isn't working. I do this because when I take my next steps in my life, I want to be absolutely sure that I did not overlook anything, that all the stones were turned over. And it works for me. And it has worked for me. And when I get in situations where I feel like I've been cornered or not listened to or overlooked, I will go and research that until my eyes are so tired from looking at books and screens and my ears and everything until I have a sensory overload of information. But I am right there and ready to present that if ever needed. Now, could this be something, uh, trauma response? You know, you see a lot of that. You see, you see on the socials, like here is a normal human situation, but it's turned into kind of a neuroses or something that is seen as aberrant or wrong when it's really just humans seeking answers to questions and not finding the things that they need to feel secure. Now, that is not me discounting the fact that there really are verifiable and real health issues of the spirit of the mind and the body that are often overlooked because people will see things online and say, oh, you don't really have that. What you really have is anxiety. Well, you, if someone is dealing with any kind of issue of the body, mind, or spirit, they are going to have anxiety. Anxiety can be a side effect, and it can be a main issue. So when I'm, what I'm saying, and that is for me, I realized that my desire to always have an answer really kind of prevented me from getting an answer. So just to make sure that you understand, I'm not discounting any mind body disorders or health issues because that really aggravates me when people do that. Then something, you know, I'm always like, oh, something happened or, you know, if I haven't talked to someone in a long time, they're like, oh, how's it been? I'm like, here's the 9,000 things that happened since we last talked. And they're like, did that really happen to you? And I'm like, yes, this has been my life since as long as I can remember. I constantly observe and engage and live in fullness and richness with the environments around me. Sometimes things are great. Sometimes things are not so great, but I perceive them in kind of this cosmic coincidental dance that is always giving me an opportunity to become a better version of myself. And there's some things that I, you know, I can't change. I can't change certain aspects of myself. I mean, I, there are drastic measures I could take, I'm sure. But there are things that I, I know and love about myself that are just not going to change. They're fundamental base platforms, I guess, of who I am. They are an integral part of who I am. And they're weird and I remember being called weird before like it reached this cult status on socials when I was a young kid I was very weird I didn't like loud sounds I didn't like certain clothes I mean at this point I'm sure that I if if I had taken my child self and dropped it in 2023 or 2024 they were the you know neuropsychs and things would have been like your child has autism and I know genetically that that particular disorder, as it's seen clinically, but that personality trait is what is genetic. So if you have a spectrum disorder or you have someone in your family that has a spectrum disorder, you might want to take a look at the genetics. And I, you know, kind of remember going through this process with my children and they would ask questions and I was like, do you, am I, are you asking me the question or is this about my kid? Because <laughs> I'm like, I do that. 
<laughs> like, oh, wait. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of things that I do that could be put into a box of something. And that is great. And I really lived in that. I really lived in having these things that I could explain to others. So I could say, oh, yeah, I have a connective tissue disorder. That's why I do the things. Oh, okay, okay. I, w I wanted to have that proof. Here's proof that I am the way that I am. And it really just, I think, was just kind of a shadow or the kind of this deep, dark part of myself that was constantly trying to seek validation within myself. I thought that I would find people that would see my garden variety Kimbo nature and think this is great it's like talking to someone that <laughs> it's like talking to a whole group of people at one time you know who could take the topic of say like pasta and take it to the nth degree where I'm talking about the sacred ceremony of wheat growth and the ancient civilization of I don't know Greece or something I mean that's just an example I I thought foolishly foolishly that this was you know the things all these things that I loved about myself that I thought were just fantastic and were celebrated by Mr. the Mister, who has a new name, Mr. Mystic Maker, but that's a whole thing. That's not for today's podcast. Um, and I, I foolishly thought that this was going to be great. And then I thought, well, you know what's going to be even better? I'm going to throw in all of this research and all of my experiences and anecdotal stories that I have gathered over the years of humans having intuition and of humans experiencing miracles that are beyond explanation and that I had made this correlation in with quantum physics and and new thoughts on the nature of reality and you know I'm like yes reincarnation is real I'm like no it's not science says it's not and I'm like well, but what about the laws of thermodynamics do you do you see nature I'm not saying that if you you know you were Cleopatra in a past past life that in this lifetime you're going to also be Cleopatra I'm just saying that science says we are energy. Science says our heart gives off electricity. Science says our brains give off electricity. Science says our bodies are frequencies. But the minute that I say, hey, there are healing frequencies. Oh, nope, nope. Out of here with that mumbo jumbo. And then you say, oh, but here's research from insert well-known, respected educational place. <laughs> school or college and they're like well that's just pseudoscience and and then you know and I've kind of it, these past 10 years like 10 years ago almost to the day just a lot of stuff happened and I got mired in this for 10 years until one day one day I'm like you know I haven't really listened to some authors that I like or I haven't read anything from their books I've just been in this survival mode for 10 years I've been working very hard to keep my family healthy I've been working hard to work with the providers that are in our lives to help keep people healthy I've been trying to have it all I've been trying to do this like I and I've been failing and falling and I look like a fool and people get mad at me and I say things and do things They're like no that's not possible and then it happens and I'm like <laughs> and I pre I'm like I presented you with this and you still made that decision and that's you that's fine that's cool I love you and then I just kind of had this I had a discussion with uh, Mr. The Mister and I said this this thing these phrases that I you know mantras that I said and uh, like these are my goals this is what I'm setting as my goals and he's like of course there's going to be cats so I have one of my grand kitties here and she loves when I'm doing anything that is sitting down 
and I don't have like a professional podcast area because whatever um but so I'm sitting and she's like you know I see you're sitting so you're sitting in a place where I can sit on you so she's gonna sit on me but she likes to get really up on me and okay there you go oh hi hi Izzy lay down good girl she's a good kitty look I've got my cat foot like this is my cat voice does anyone else have a like voice for their animals? Let's see if we can get her. They say the sound of cat purr, purring. <laughs> She's like, no, nope, just let me bump into the microphone. So I just decided that okay, let's let's just let's roll back. Let's roll it back to 2014. Let's roll it back to 2014 when I was teaching classes on meditation. Let's roll it back to 2014 when I was teaching art, when I was teaching poetry, when I had clients, when I was my kids were going out. Everything was like the not that everything was perfect because, you know, I was still a hot mess test then and I will be a hot mess test in the future. I mean, that's just how it is. Um, and I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love being me. I'm very grateful that <laughs> I've been able to experience this life. But rolling it back to 2014. And I'm like, girl, you were cooking. You had good community. You were very okay with your spiritual side. You were very okay with leaning into the holistic and complementary medicine it, very wise like I, I need antibiotics I'm gonna go get antibiotics um, but if I need if I have a spiritual issue that I'm dealing with I'm gonna go to someone that can help me just in and helping people learn how to have autonomy in their lives in whatever degree and then something happened and I spent a lot of time in these past 10 years being really mad, really mad at my circumstances and being very angry and talking about how people didn't understand and how I was mom to I was a sick mom of sick kids. And, you know, you need you need to change your life to accommodate to me and just and and how it uprooted the lives of my family to go through this and and the support that's there. Not really there. It wasn't there for our family. I have met other families that were like we left the support groups because it just it, it we couldn't do it for some people support groups are great and i'm very thankful that they are out there but for others we just don't work well and and we need something else like we actually needed physical support and that wasn't available and sadly that's not av available for a lot of families when they have a loved one that has a health issue again of the body of the mind or of the spirit there is no true support and so i was just out there doing my thing and trying to to be my best and do my best as well as look cool on the internet and this is what I'm going to do and make these all kinds of proclamations um, and then you know perimenopause happened and then menopause and now I'm postmenopausal and I will just tell you that on the other side of this I feel like a brand new person I'm like I'm every woman anyway so I'm like I'm completely and it is and that's a whole other thing we even therapists therapists don't talk to women this age about menopause and how it can make you feel absolutely all kinds of ways it affects your body it affects your mind it affects your spirit but instead of saying something like, hey, let's have a discussion with your primary care provider and see if, if you might be in perimenopause, you, because you go to your primary care and they're like, mm, 
Yeah, I think that you have octoflocta loctopus disease, and I'm going to send you to 92 specialty doctors. And then when you go to those 92 specialty doctors, they're going to tell you things that you don't know your body, you don't know this. And then you, after you've like given money to every doctor in your community, you go home and you, you're like, I'm going to read, I just, I'm going to get a book. I'm going to read this book, or I'm going to read this. And they're like, oh, hey this is the specific test you need to see you need to 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 go have to see if you're in menopause or what stage of menopause you're in because when hormones are changing through your body you're going to feel very wild and wacky and you're going to have a hard time with everything and you're going to get really sad and you're going to get angry and you're going to get depressed and you might feel like you have no other choice on this planet but to just disappear and it is so sad and angering to me that women do not get that information and they don't get it from their gynecologist they don't get it from other women instead they're just oh you when you get the menopause you're gonna get a beard okay okay when you get the menopause you, men won't find you attractive anymore uh, okay like it they're horror stories or you know like ah, I just the things that I heard growing up about menopause made me terrified of menopause same thing when I got pregnant when I was like st I was not supposed to have kids according to early um primary care <laughs> experiences early visits to my lady doctor um and because of the shape of it's a whole thing so when i got pregnant with twins i was just so like shocked because it, it, it was a whole experience and i had read about these wonderful things online you know you go to these women's groups and they all have blessing ways and the, and and literally that never happened even though I tried to find these places that might do it, and now you can actually pay somebody to come and do a blessing week for you, which I think, you know, good or bad, however you feel, it's still women need to feel validated in their experience. And men do too, as do children. It's the, so just so you know. And I just, it's the thing, you're going to crap yourself when you have a baby. I'm thinking, I, okay I once did crap myself when I was a child and I'm sure that somehow I will uh, you know or, uh, like th you'll you'll never have a flat belly again <laughs> friend I didn't have a flat belly to begin with uh, just are they gonna hate you and they'll be so mad at you and just these horrible things and nobody said to me this is going to be scary you're going to be scared it doesn't matter how brave or excited or whatever you are, it will be scary at some point. If you do not have someone to give you support, here are ways that you can find support. Find a nurse, go take tours, find out who's gonna be, you know, who's working the week that you're gonna be there. Find allies. This is, you know, I understand that for a lot of people, it's impossible to do that. But there are ways that you can find something that's good and go within yourself. There, there is, and this is not being being ableist at all. I'm just, I'm saying, as someone who has done a lot of stuff in my life solo, that I'm very, I have a lot of gratitude and thankfulness that even with no or limited resources, I have been able to find a way to make a situation at least manageable. And I want to do that for other people. I want to remind people that they are shining. Everyone is shining brightly as the sun. We are all shining brightly as the sun. And to do that, and I'm going to get to the books to do that I had to make the changes within myself so I knuckled down buckled down got all of my eggs together in a basket and did all the things and <laughs> decided that I needed to <sighs> I 
I needed to make changes in myself so that I felt good in myself. And so... I decided to pick up some things and to read again. Things that brought me some peace in 2013 and 2014. And I didn't go back and say, oh, on you know October 2nd, 2013, I read this book or whatever. <coughs> the un- I mean, it's it sounds all like... <laughs> when I'm like the universe but but because I pay attention because I'm constantly paying attention because I don't miss the finer details of things I found you know some picture or something and behind it was a little thing that I had written about my experience doing all these classes and being able to do what I love and making things and helping people and you know, stories that I was going to tell and things that I was going to write, or I was going to just all of this stuff. And then I found this quote from Ram Das. And in, in those words, I, I thought, Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, good old Ram Das. I mean, feet of clay. We're all, we all have feet of clay, but there was something about Ram Dass that really touched my soul, for lack of a better word. I mean, here was a guy, for all intents and purposes, that was, his life was set, he was, you know, the son of um, fairly wealthy uh, Jewish Americans, and they he was able to go to good schools and have privileges and things that were not afforded to many also not being in uh he was a minority being that he's jewish uh in the area that he grew up he was not a minority but just in general and he just was like i'm going to go be a mental health provider he was he went into psychology and the story is just amazing, and, and really you should look it up for your for yourself. But he went with the science of mind. Everything was pragmatic. There was no room for divinity or the mystery or spiritual things because point A to point B, that's how it works. This is how it is. You know, no mysticism. I mean, he was a good Jewish boy, but he didn't really, you know, partake in all of the stuff because now he was educated and he, whatever. And then he met Timothy Leary. And after that, it all changed. And he was able to expand and open his mind. Did it fix things? No. He still had a lot of unresolved things that were going on within him. So he, you know, winds up in this journey to India. I'm leaving out a whole lot of really good stuff. Please, if you haven't already, just... In, in, Ram Dass may not be your cup of tea, um, but for me, he has been soul bomb. There's a great story that he tells about a woman that... I'll get to that in a minute, but... So, I, you know, I'm reading about this and this or that. I was like, well, you know, let me go see if there are any... I haven't listened to any talks on YouTube, so I go. And then I find Ram Dass Lo-Fi, which I must say is just chef's kiss for me. Because my brain is like, there's music, there's there's talking. Um, you know, it was it was great. And he tells these stories, and sometimes you hear the same story in a different place that he's in a di- at a different talk. But you start to, you start to learn these stories, and and you are there with him. You are there with him in this experience. So, in this particular, the thing that I wrote down was a quote from Maharaji. And what Maharaji said, and it was the quote that was, you were thinking of your mother. And immediately when I saw that quote, I thought of the story. 
and I'm not gonna it, it's it basically it kind of involves where Ram Dass or Richard Alpert came to realize that their science and spirituality are not at odds with each other and he took this pragmatic human experience and dipped it in the well of pure love just pure love and somewhere i'm sure there are stories of just that are opposite of this because i understand that because these people are still human they are still human and the there are people that i am that don't like me and that I don't like engaging with their behaviors who have taught me more, taught me so much more than someone that's just like me or someone that is in the, the same tributary going to the stream, to the, you know, to the river, to the oceans and so on. These people have taught me so much it is amazing and in fact my greatest teacher my greatest teacher i may not ever see him again um is the person that led me to be in this place for 10 years greatest teacher when i'm on my deathbed and someone's like who is your greatest teacher and i'll say outside of my children and my husband and the close people that have been in my life for 20 plus years I will say this person's name because that person showed me the same kind of experience, not as good as Ram Dass, the same kind of experience that Ram Dass had when he met Maharaji. For that to happen, even though it caused me the greatest amount of pain, it caused me to doubt myself every single day for a, a a decade until it did until it didn't anymore and i allowed myself to let other people tell me what to do and i also allowed myself to be just a not very nice person and that's, I feel very sad. And I'm sad about that. Um, I do have a lot of sadness about that. And I may not be able to say I'm sorry to everyone. But I was very caught up in my neuroses of, you need to do this for me because I am working from a space that is less than. And you need to identify yourself is understanding that I am less than because of these things again until it wasn't um and so I just decided that I was gonna start reading be here now again and as I'm reading it I'm, I'm listening to music because this is I've been this way I'm not going to change you can tell me all the brain research that says that I'm not actually listening to the music or whatever and that's great but it works for me and we're running with it and I would read in the book this passage and some song that I was listening to would have the exact same words now we could sit here and split hairs and talk about oh well you probably had you had your phone and it, it you maybe you mentioned be here now and i heard it and it made that sure that's great that's if it's ai doing it i don't care i do not care because what happened to me is this moment of awakening for myself where i began to see a deeper richer understanding of my experience on the L in Chicago last year which is it is not about me none of this is real I I can I can make two choices every day when I get up I can say oh not this again or I can say oh this again and you know, <laughs> I listen to those things 
over the past year, I would get so mad, like, well, they don't know who I am. They don't know my problems. And, and that was me. That was me. And this is not me getting ready to say, and now that I've found the secrets to the universe for twenty nine ninety five, you too can be a part of my dog and pony show. No, like Ram Dass talks about fake holy and fake spiritual. And I, I'm, I don't want to go to those places anymore. But all of that was helpful to me. Like every time I would find some whatever and people that I met along the way and and the things that they would do like you know like oh your work is so awesome I want to do the exact same things that you do and I'm like what and I would get really upset and the universe would be like but you're not doing it so you've always said if it's you're not it's not if it's not for you, then it's for someone else, but you weren't doing it. You can't be mad at somebody for doing something that you taught them how to do and running with it. Um, and I just was like, what? and then I had a discussion with this friend of mine that I've known forever. And, and, I, and where I did, I was like, look, why in the world do this, does this keep happening? Why is this like, <clears throat> You know, why don't you... And, and I then I realized, I was like, oh my... And like, she didn't say anything. God love her. <laughs> bless her. Like, bless her for real. Um, she just rolled with it and was like, all right, I, I see what you're saying. And I understand. And we worked through it. And which is amazing because I would have already been like, you're out of here <laughs> I'm out of here not like the it, you know I'd been like well clearly I am in the right because it's all about me um but I think what I said was a real I, she heard my heart she heard my heart and she replied back to me and and she's like I hear what you're saying and not in that like therapy like oh I hear what you're saying she held space for me to make that realization and I don't think I'll ever be able to explain that as well as I am right now um, hopefully you're listening right now friend I'm just saying <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me I was like that was a giggle and then all of a sudden it went to some kind of like you know crazy sound anyway um, and there have been other experiences like that especially with my kids where I'm like oh my gosh I'm so sorry I have been this way and they're like we're just glad you figured it out <clears throat> sorry about that <laughs> didn't know what to do for a second and I was like oh my gosh um it because I was I felt the 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 glorious joys of speaking uh when you get all like the clamped in your throat um and you know and just that I, I have had challenges and I have t and I, I have been the challenged and I have been the challenger and so I I have faced the whole like okay so I, I had to <laughs> it's like I better clear my throat because there's this like one critic of you know the of people's podcasts they're like oh I, I hate when the throat I mean just let me just break it down we're not all perfect and I understand that we're not everyone's cup of tea but could we just branch away from the formulaic podcast and literally just have people chatting about shit? It's <laughs> just getting, like, you know, <clears throat> wait, I mean, and, and, and I mean, there's kind of that too, but it's all staged. It's like worked out before. There's no like impromptu. That's what I want. So, you know, here's my goal for the rest of the year. If you want to be on a podcast, if you would love to be on my podcast, come out. I will let, we'll, let's sit on the back porch um, and we'll pick a day where it should, you know, the weather should be good or, you know, come early in the morning because that's when it's quiet in the house and we'll just talk about shit. I'll get out the microphone. We'll just talk about shit and that'll be mom's strange magic for the day. Um, says it and that'll be the episode. So yeah so i it's not all about me and all these things that i'm experiencing that are really hor we're horrible like i went through some horrible stuff um i could i could tell you things and you'd be like uh that really happened i'm like yes i have the receipts there was witnesses it really happened um 
and then still be able to be like, but here I am rocking it. Like I'm still trying to get back some things that were lost. Um, I, you know, my illness last year, let's that one time at band camp, but uh, I, I really don't want to go on about it anymore, but it did leave me needing to, to, to rest and go a little slow. That's how the body is. That's what we need rest. Right. One of the things that causes the greatest problem in our lives is that we're constantly trying to fill too much into our days to get to a place where we think we fit in and we. Oh, it's a kitty. It's a kitty. Oh, I love babysitting my grandcats again. Cat voice. <laughs> it's cat voice. So in all of that, I found I found my voice. I found myself. I did that Adana's descent. I did. I went to the underworld. I had a dramatic death. I begged for someone to come and help me. And, you know, there was people, people in my life were like, well, that's weird. Kim's gone again. Well, she must not like us or not want to be our friends anymore because she just disappeared off the face of the earth. And I'm like, no no that's not it like I'm struggling and I came down to the underworld and I'm trying to figure things out and I'm, I'm, I'm dying here and it's like ah, okay well she's gone um, and we all have that we all have that we all need to have that time where we just kind of check out and if you don't need that time I think that's a, a great you have great self awareness and I really admire that but for me, in these last 10 years, when I was constantly on fire, and I'm like, I'm on fire, and people are like, I see that you're on fire. However, what have you done for me lately? And I'm like, well, I'm burning on fire for you. And they're like, mm, are you, are you really, are you really doing that for me? Or is it just a show? I mean, it could, I don't know. I don't know. And it doesn't matter. I've grown. I've learned. I've moved on. I don't even... Like, I look back at that and I was like, well, that was when I was little. <laughs> I didn't know anything back then. I was young. I was younger then and full of hope. Um, and yeah, so I go back to these things and I go back to bhakti yoga and I go back to the things that, that have been integral parts of myself since I started learning these things in college in the early 90s. So like going way back over 30 years you know and and how I'd found this just like peace that surpassed all understanding in this misfit ragtag group of weirdos who just loved everyone and told the truth and that is something that Maharaji said to Ram Das: love everyone and tell the truth and you know Ram Das would say well you know what should I do and um, Maharaji would say, love all, serve all, or feed my people. And you think, mm, that's pretty cool. And then you start to look, as I do, at all the world's religions, and you see the same thing. So if you want to get closer to that really good feeling, that good good, if you want to be closer to your God or your ideal whatever that uh, you, your belief whether you're, you're agnostic or atheist whether you're like a humanist or whatever whatever it is that you feel makes you want to be a better person and believe in something bigger than yourself whether it's a spiritual thing a scientific thing or nothing at all it doesn't matter um or just being a good person just a good sense of morals and it it, it is an every single faith system that's out there it is out there oh yeah so in in all of this i think what i'm trying to say is that i have come back from a very long journey and if you've ever watched lord of the rings frodo 
comes back and you know to to there and back again and he's faced all these things and you know he's he's carried the ring he's carried the burden and he comes back and he comes back to the shire and he's changed it's the same with the descent of anana and um he's working to try to figure out who and what he is and same with anana and what happens is they come back and they're they're still the same person they're just changed they're just different they've had different experiences but this they're still the same person and now that they've had those they know what they what is important to them in life and they follow through on that and that's where i am and that's this whole grand experiment with a podcast and this is how i've gone you know it's like there's just so much and i could talk for hours but i'm i i I want to i want to be considerate of your time dear listener um oh there's an um oh anyway uh the thing here is that i'm very grateful that i've been able to have these experiences and i hope that and then the more consistent podcast deliveries that you too will find that when the going gets weird the weird should should turn pro the weird you know whatever um and that you are an amazing person and i know this because i am an amazing person and i we are all amazing people and that just makes me get a little emotional. I just had to get a little emotional there. Um, yeah. So, in all of this, don't forget to be that awesome person. And I see you. I truly see you. And I hear you. And I am so sorry if life has dealt you a lot of unfair cards. I... I wish that that didn't have to happen for anyone. And I'm sorry that you are experiencing that or that you have experienced that. It is my hope that these podcasts will bring a little bit of joy to your world and to your day. And it is my hope that you will watch me as I go through my experiences or listen to me as I go through my experiences and see if they resonate with you or you can be like screw this lady she's crazy but whatever you do i hope that you truly do understand that i see you i love you and i care about you and with that that is it for today's podcast this episode and i will see you next time